Ready to have a cup of coffee? I have my coffee here. And coffee is here, water is here. In the evening, you can come and drink a glass of wine with me or something different. No sugar no. in your coffee, right? Always with sugar. No milk with sugar. And no, you put sugar no, in no your coffee. coffee. Espresso. Espresso, nice. You know, I was playing in Italy for years, and uh, for this, I'm a fan of espresso. And we'll talk about Italian football in, at, at the end, because I want to get I your was opinion watching on that. I was watching yesterday Milan Juve. Uh, did you watch Sampdoria Inter? That's the question. Uh, they, they lost 2 1. I saw only the goals. The game for me was yesterday Milan Juventus. That was a good one, yeah. Good, yeah, good it was a, a really good game. Sorry, I, I I have no time to follow every every week uh, the Italian football, but in this uh, in this game I was really surprised how they play in the offense. Both teams. Well, congratulations on being named a, one of the best players in the history of the sport in the best eleven for France football. What does this mean to you? Well, first, they make the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a joke. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's an honor for me uh, to to be in a first eleven team from so many big players. I think everybody who was uh, on the list was doing so much for football uh, and to help the football to to be so popular. And uh, sure, I was a little bit surprised to be in a team with Pele, Maradona, my friend Franz Beckenbauer. Well, honor for me and Ronaldo and Messi. <laughs> yes, it was, uh, was nice. And uh, believe me, I was proud of this. I was happy. And in the evening, I open a bottle of champagne and say, hey, it was a good time when you were a football player. And now you and this team, the people didn't forgot you. And uh, it was very nice. It was really very nice. And I was talking with Franz Beckenbauer the same because he was uh, the sweeper and I was the midfielder. And I said, Franz, we never played in a team, but now they vote us in the in the best eleven ever. Have you imagined what would it be like to to be on that field with those with all those names? No, but uh, not only these names. Who was in the first eleven? All the other names too. Yes, I saw Johan Cruyff, I saw Gerd Müller, I saw Platini, I saw Zinedine Zidane, and uh, wow. Yeah, they was doing so much for football and uh, I don't see myself, I see them more and higher than myself because uh, I was scoring goals, I was winning titles, sure I was a leader, uh, sure in many games I make the difference, but look, Sinity Zidane, Johan Cruyff, uh, players, I, I forgot 100 and others, but uh, it, was, uh, it was something special, yes. And this, was coming you... from the, and this was coming from the fans. Now, they don't know the history of the football, mostly of them, because they were, nobody was watching Pele maybe live in a game. I was not watching Pele live in a game. And this uh, decision was coming uh, from the social media. This means more the younger generation vote this team. Who's the best player you saw? Or I can say <laughs> what I saw or what I played against or with him. This is a question. Who was the best player you played against or where? Maradona. <laughs> Maradona. Maradona. Diego. Diego was uh, not only a great player or the best in the 80s. I will not say he was the best player ever because this you can't say because the football was changing in the last 50, 60 years a lot. Maradona won only one World Cup title with Argentina. Very important title for the country. Very important title for him. But Pele won three times a World Championship. Uh, 58, 62, and 70. Franz Beckenbauer won the title like a player, uh, won a lot of champions, uh, chip, uh, championship with Bayern Munich, a lot of Champions Leagues or Cup uh, champions uh, in the 70s. You had so many great players in, in the history. For this, I can say Maradona was sure the best player in this time when I was active player. That yes, was Maradona, especially in the 80s. Uh, with Naples, with uh, a World Cup uh, in Mexico where, where he won with Argentina. Maradona was in this time the best, but when you see a little bit the titles, maybe Pele was making more for the football or won more World Championship title. But I think it's not fair like uh, this uh, best 11 in, uh, in the Ballon d'Or. Uh, because when you see the player, what I told behind, you have so many, many great players who make so 
good things for the football and for this is, football is so popular and interest still today for mostly of the peoples all around the world. You played in all the World Cups that you played. You won the World Cup. And, and yet, after the passing of Maradona, we have seen all the images and read all the stories and, and watched the games that Maradona played in Mexico. Have you ever seen a player at a World Cup at the level of Maradona? Uh, no, I, I, I thought it's the same. When he left us, a journalist was calling me and I say, I, I, each World Cup has some, it's connect with an, an, a player of uh, a name of the player. Mm -hmm. Like maybe 2002, Ronaldo from Brazil. Like maybe Cannavaro, 2006. Maybe Iniesta, 2010. Maybe uh, Manuel Neuer or Miroslav Klose or Mario Götze, 2014. 2018, maybe Mbappé. Doesn't matter. But the connection between a World Cup and a name of a player more than 986 Maradona and World Cup in Mexico, it's not possible. This was his World Cup. You saw him right there. You saw him on the field in Mexico. You saw him on the, in pitches in, in Italy. What made him? What, what did he do that nobody did? I saw him not only on the field and not only in the competition. I met him privately many, many times. Uh, wait me one second. I have a picture from Maradona. I didn't know you asked me today about Maradona, but this picture is mostly with me. Maradona and me, Carnival in Rio de Janeiro, 2006, together. The connection was even greater than, than just the football pitch. I remember yes. you played you, oh, you sorry, went to I Buenos Aires to play with I him. I didn't answer your question. <laughs> This was a private picture. We have private connection. To, I cannot say he was my friend. For this, we was living too far from each other. We didn't have every day a telephone call, but we was really very close from the feeling, from the respect. Yeah, we had the two World Cup finals against each other. 1986, we was talking about this World Cup, 1990, when Germany won the World Cup. We had uh, competition in Italy, Naples, very good team with Maradona, Inter, very good team with myself, uh, competition fights, but a lot of respect. Before the game, we come always close to each other, hugs each other, wish each other only the best. And sometimes we had private stories like this, or the same, uh, his, uh, 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 the, 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 the last game from Maradona in Buenos Aires, I was guest of him. He come to me to my farewell game to Munich. Then we had a game, one time we played in the team together, you know it? We played one time in a team together. No, no. Marathon and me. This was a farewell game from Michel Platini, 1988. We was a world election. Uh, Trapattoni was the coach and we played together. And uh, first goal in this game was a goal for us. Maradona give a pass deep. I was running with my speed and scored the first goal in this game. The same, nice story. And later after the game, we celebrate together. We had a big party. When he come back to Sevilla, we had a big party till seven o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, always something happened between us. We was really not close, but when we saw each other, we was really yeah, good connect and uh, we had a lot of fun. Lothar, moving on, who was the best you've seen from the stands outside of the field? Who was the best after Maradona? Uh, Zidane played, uh, pl uh, played very well, H highest level. Uh, now Messi and Ronaldo, sure. The last 10, 12, 14 years, so only these two names. Sure, now it's coming the new generation, maybe. Lewandowski is not a new generation, similar age than them, but he had a great season with Bayern Munich. And uh, yes, uh, I think uh, when we speak about the moment or the, 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 the last 10, 15 years, you have only two names, Ronaldo and Messi. And you cannot say this or this is better, but I prefer more Messi about the style. But Ronaldo is the same in a different way, important and uh, powerful and uh, finishing. Uh, two, two outstanding players for me. 
let's travel to Germany now and to the current state of, of the competition. There's a big game this Friday. Both teams you played with. You started with Borussia Mönchengladbach. You, your career was pretty much made at Bayern Munich. Um, when you started, though, at Gladbach, the rivalry was different. The sense of it being more of a, of a classic game for German football existed because of what Gladbach meant in the 1970s and, and what Bayern was creating. To, well, Bayern did also in the 1970s. They shared many Bundesliga titles in that decade. How would you explain what Gladbach-Bayern meant back in uh, the days when you started? When we speak always about the Clásico between Barcelona and Real Madrid, this is normally the really Clásico in Germany. Now we speak about Dortmund against Bayern Munich because the name Clásico came to Germany 10 years or 12 years ago. And München Gladbach was not an, anymore this team like in the 70s. But this is for me the really Clásico in Germany. It's Borussia München Gladbach against Bayern Munich about the story of these two clubs in the, in, in the history. Uh, München Gladbach, uh, small club, uh, small city, but uh, a club who is uh, playing always a high level of uh, the high fashion of football. They play uh, high speed football, they play early uh, high pressing, uh, attacking very early. Uh, they have uh, physically strong players, they have fast players, and I think they have come back to the roots in the last two years with Marco Rose. Because uh, Marco Rose, the coach who was coming one and a half year ago from, Leib uh, from uh, Salzburg, he gave the style back to Borussia München Gladbach, what made Borussia München Gladbach so famous in the 70s with Günter Netzer, with Jupp Heinges, with Bertie Vogts, with Rainer Bonhoff. Yeah, this was my team too. I was all, when I was a kid, small five, ten years, I support Borussia Mönchengladbach because they play in this time the most attractive football in Germany. What, where is the relation now? Where, where do we see them now as, as clubs? You, of course, you mentioned the classic, uh, you know, Dortmund-Bayern, but now where does Gladbach fit in? Uh, for, for me, Gladbach was coming back now in the last years. Uh, they was qualified three times for the Champions League with a small budget. You have to see always uh, Bayern Munich, Dortmund and München Gladbach. This means Borussia uh, München Gladbach has around 30% of maximum 40% budget from Bayern Munich. But with this budget, they make the, a very good job. They play on the highest level. They qualify sometimes for the Champions League. Uh, they play now always under the top five in Germany. And uh, I look a little bit in the future. And I think with this team, not only on the field with the players, with the team, with Max Eber, with Marco Rose, uh, with the uh, president, everything is completely focused for football. They don't have another stories around the football. They have built the stories on the field. And this, I think, it's the reason why Borussia München Gladbach was coming back so fast. Two of the four teams that have qualified for German football into the run of 16 at the Champions League are facing each other, Gladbach and Bayern Munich. What does this mean for German football? The four teams have made it to the round of 16. Is this a, a coincidence? Is this a product of something that will see the Bundesliga clubs establish themselves amongst the best in Europe for years to come? Yeah, yes, exactly. We had a small break. Uh, we was not performed very well in the last years. Not only the Bundesliga clubs, the same the national team. We had our problems and we see the problems, but we have to uh, improve. And uh, we are very happy to have all our four clubs uh, in the in the in the in the second round in the Champions League. And not only the four clubs in the Champions League, we have the same our two clubs in the Europe League in the next round with Bayer Leverkusen and Hoffenheim. And uh, this show the German football is coming back. Last year, we had two teams in the Champions League semi-final with Leipzig and uh, Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich won later the Champions League. I think uh, uh, in the, it was a time when we can say the Bundesliga was maybe on the third or fourth position in Europe. But now I will tell we are not far away from Spanish football or from English football. Maybe we are on the same level like them because only small things can make the details. But when you see the results, I think the Bundesliga is 
Thank you. Lothar, always a pleasure to chat with you. It's been great to have this cup of coffee. It, was, it, it yes. turned out cold. I got to get yes, a second one. Cold, huh? You can make a new one. We'll do it. It's early yeah, okay. here. Thank you <laughs> Thank so you much. Thank you very much.